Chair. Gentlemen, yield back. Chair recognizes Mr. Moskowitz for five minutes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, and, and thank you, Chiefs, for, for coming here today. Uh, and, you know, I appreciate and I know the committee appreciates your service to the country. You know, this country has served as a beacon of freedom uh, and a place for where people can escape oppression. Uh, as someone whose grandparents escaped the Holocaust and came here because America was that beacon, it's important that America continue to be that beacon in the world for people escaping oppression, especially from, from their government. You know, the congressman that I replaced, nephew died from a fentanyl overdose, Ted Deutsch. And, you know, one of the words that he, he mentioned, and I'm going to read something that he, gave, he, in an editorial he wrote, it says, you know, we cannot wait until it's all personal to us. It's time for us to pass the many bipartisan bills introduced this Congress that will protect the health and well-being of the American people in state legislatures. It's time to adapt drug laws to support rather than stigmatize Americans in need, time to broaden access. We need to rise above the polarization, the cheap shots, the partisan fights to powerfully face the harsh realities of fentanyl. You know, those words could not be more true than in this hearing. Because all we're doing in this hearing is politicizing another issue in this country that doesn't need to be politicized. We all agree that fentanyl is a problem. Um, you made a statement earlier about fentanyl um, and there was a question, I think, by Congressman Perry. He said, uh, fentanyl is coming in illegally. I have a question. Does any fentanyl, and this is for either of you, does any fentanyl come into this country legally? It's an easy one. Sir, yes, thanks for the question. And my understanding is, is, of course, fentanyl is used in medical procedures. Okay, but it's not coming, whether to the port or any other place, right? It's not coming through a legal process. That's all illegal. No, it's, not a, it's not a trick question. Sir, if I'm understanding correctly, if you're talking about fentanyl that's being used medically, then yes. That I'm not talking about medical fentanyl. We, we don't have a problem with things escaping pharmacies. I'm talking about stuff that's coming through when it comes through a port, right? That's illegal, correct? Yes. Oh, so yes. So I'm, I apologize. Now I do understand. And I think that gets to, to my earlier point is that for us, it, it's not important if it's coming through the port or between the ports. When, you know, when, when my sector... Well, so that's good. Can I, I just want to stop you there. I appreciate that, that it's not important where it comes from because it's about the fentanyl, right? So then why is the majority only talking about one out of every nine pills that are coming into this country, right? If 90% are coming through ports of entry, that means nine pills... They don't want to talk about. They only want to talk about one pill, which is the 10%, right? Shouldn't we be talking about all of it? Shouldn't they be as concerned uh, as they are? Is it coming across the Rio Grande as if it comes across the port? Well, sir, I would say anyone that's lost a loved one of fentanyl probably doesn't care if it came through the port or, or between the ports of entry. It's all important, as you said, and, and whoever's transporting it, unimportant to us as well. No, Our that, job is to secure the border. No, that's exactly right. And, and look, I understand you guys aren't the experts on all things fentanyl. Uh, you know, the, the chairman didn't bring those experts here today. Um, you know, a lot of the members over there voted against funding for you guys, right? Voted against all the things you say you need. They voted against all that stuff. So they, they say they're strong on the border, but when it comes to funding it, they, they didn't want to do it. You know, we've heard statistics today about, you know, apprehensions and all of that stuff, but, you know, one of the things I find fascinating is, you know, we're, we're beefing up the border and we're apprehending more people. They want to spin that as a bad thing, that apprehending more people means more people are trying to get in. Well, news for them, in 2019, 3,707 pounds of narcotics were seized in 2019. That's more than in 2022. So does that mean more narcotics were coming in in, in 2019? It's possible. You know, th they're focused on the realm of, of the possible rather than the facts. Let me give you another fact. I'm concerned about, about fentanyl getting into children. But you know what I'm also equally concerned about that they're not concerned about? The leading cause of death among kids between 1 and 19 is not fentanyl. It's guns. 
right? There's not going to be any oversight for the children that are buried in a cemetery. We're coming on the five-year anniversary of Parkland, where parents are going to go visit their kids in a cemetery, right? There's no oversight hearing on the epidemic that's going on with kids and guns, but we should be equally concerned about fentanyl with kids and guns with kids. I yield back.